Okay, rendering is now done. Let's have a look at it. Okay, that looks uh, pretty cool. The one thing I do want to mention is that, I don't know if you remember, we increased the resolution for the main explosion and we reduced the resolution for these and you can tell the difference between the two, okay? And um, I also changed a few settings. I'm gonna go through them right now. So if you want high quality render, obviously you need to increase the resolution. Okay, I just didn't have time, so I didn't bother doing it. So I'm gonna just go through the changes I made. So all of the red indicates the changes, okay? First of all, what I did was I went inside flash line source and I disabled the jitter noise. We've all, I've already um, cached the simulation and obviously doing this is not going to have any impact on the actual simulation itself. But this was important to do for the light source, okay, uh, which is this, this light source here, okay. Because what was happening was um, when I left it like that, it was moving like a worm, um, which is okay, but it was too much. So I decided to disable it. You can leave it enabled. It's your choice. <clears throat> so the next thing I changed was I changed the position of the sunlight and I changed the intensity. Um, the sunlight now is sitting just in front of the camera, just tilted up a little bit. Okay. And I added a background because I wanted to match the uh, sand color to the smoke. So I'm also going to go through that. And what else did I do here? I increased the contribution scale to two. I think I already did that. Um, and then I, let me have a look at the shop. Okay. So a few modifications here. Again, all of this is related to the tint for the smoke itself. Originally, I think it was gray. Now I masked to this color. Um, and it's the same with the trails, flash lines, and um, shockwave but what I also did was I increased the um, new max range of the density to 4 and shadow density scale to 8 for all of them so their densities are all identical okay and then in the out which is the redshift ROP I um, let me just re refer restore this to default okay um, as you know, I, I think I already told you that I added three AOVs, volume, fog, emission, volume, lighting, and emission. All right. We're going to use that in the compositing shortly. Um, common, I added a prefix path, um, which you all know how to do. And then I uh, reduced the global illumination to 32 because um, it was just taking too long. Okay so also it's a far away shot so you can barely notice any of the noise and then max samples i reduced it to 32 also it was originally set to 64. so they were the they're all the changes uh, and also i will clear this red um cam one i changed the resolution to uh, 720. what i also did was i let me just push this back and open the render view I'm gonna kill the render so I changed the flare to 0.2 it was 0.4 it was way too much okay so I reduced it to 0.2 that's all they are all the changes and um, the reason why I reduced the flare is because you can see here how much a flare is coming up at 0.2 so I didn't want any more than that okay so also I want to point out something here so all of these blurriness here if you look at if I zoom in here you look at the actual alpha you won't see that that much and when I cut it out with alpha a lot of this is going to disappear okay again you need to uh, render at high resolution. This is a low res um, render and that's why you'll see a lot of noise here 
maybe you can actually use a noise also. Uh, sorry, you can also use the uh, noise reduction. Unfortunately, my GPU is not supporting that, so I can't use it. Uh, but the good thing is that you can see all of these little things showing up, and it's it's pretty pretty good. I'm going to show you the final result and also the original result. This is the uh, let me see here. This is the um, result from the tutorial. I only did 75 frames, by the way, so I had to cut it. So. Okay, I hope uh, you like that one. But the original one, which is here, which is a high resolution export. Okay, so I'm going to leave links in the description to download these project files. Again, as I mentioned at the start of this tutorial, uh, please support me by purchasing the file. Um, the um, project files will contain all eight parts and the original file, uh, hip files, plus After Effects project file. The background mountain comes from textures.com. I cannot give you that because that'll be violating copyright. So I'm going to leave a link to this download that is free, but you can download that. And uh, let me go through the After Effects file right now. So this is the first one. I'm just going to go through. It's only going to be a walkthrough, okay? I'm not going to do a tutorial on this. So, first thing is volume. I brought in the volume. We go into effects. I used extractor and extracted um, volume layer, okay? That's what that is. And I did the same for volume emission. And then just the emission, okay? You can see here. Emission shows up. And then I put the uh, background in and I used alpha. So if I don't use alpha, that's how it looks like. So I put in a fast box blur. This is to avoid any kind of transparency in the smoke. So I blur the background and alpha matte that using the file here. Okay, so this is the original. So this is the um, this is the original EXR that I exported without any extractor plug um, effect. I used the alpha, which is which is which it has got, um, and alpha matted this out. Okay, that means the background um, is kind of blurry, but it won't be transparent. I I hope you understand what I mean. Um, because without it, that's how it looked like. With it, that's how it'll look like. It also looks like it has a little bit of light wrap effect. Okay. So I'm. I also added this FGBG. What is what does that mean? That means it's just a foreground, but I blurred it out so that it stays on top of our um, original. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Oh, well, there you go. I'll enable this. So it softens up a little bit, and this is very useful, especially when you have a mission. Without it, with it. Okay, it kind of gives you a glow kind of effect, but you don't need to do this. Uh, you can change it to add if you like to make it more glowy. That looks better, I think. Um, so that's what I did for that. So let's move on to explosion with trails. So I copied the exp precomp in here, okay? If you duplicate it here, any changes you make into the new precomp will affect this one as well because these are identical copies, literally the same. Um, any changes you make in one will affect the other. But if you duplicate it up here, they are independent to each other, okay? So I duplicated here. I brought it into here and this has alpha as you can see so what I did was as I was mentioning before I used this alpha and I used the alpha mat here to cut it out so if I were to change this to no track mat you'll see there's a difference here okay oops 
maybe here you can you can have a look here or here or here it doesn't matter I will change this now to alpha map see that so that's what I wanted so I've got that good and then this is light wrap effect okay so what is that so that is to give the light that wraps around um, the edges yeah that's it so you've got your brown background here I want that brown background to wrap around the edges of the smoke and when the smoke goes up the sky will wrap around it okay the sky is color that's what that basically is so if I yeah you see that that's what that is so how did I do that if I go to effects let me just disable these first of all I duplicated the background added a fast blur and then I set matte and set the uh, t take matte from layer exp precomp okay and then I set a channel blur and then I uh, set the alpha blurriness to 25 um, if you look at this separately you can't really see it but all right okay and then when I put that uh, do you know what I'm gonna just enable this one all right so now you can see so without channel blur with channel blur so it blurs it out a little bit and I'll put the second set mat in and use the same exp precomp but this time um, I will not invert it this the second this set mat is inverted this one isn't now if I adjust the blurriness to let's say zero you'll see that this doesn't look very good okay and that's why I added alpha blurriness so I mean you can change it to your taste 20 or whatever you want I left it at 25 okay so that's what that is I'm pressing and pressing hold shift and um, slash to fit the view the next thing is um, let me just yeah I added the background here as well okay so <clears throat> uh, let me see if I've got any animation here okay no animations um, now in the main one what did I do yes so I added a few um, controllers so one is I just called it frequency and another one I called it amplitude that is to do with uh, let me see here frequency amplitude camera lens blur uh, no it's not uh, what is this position I think yeah that's right so if I go to position in expression I added a wiggle effect and connected the frequency and amplitude and and I animated these two so it kind of works well okay uh, maybe I can show it here oh, I gotten rid of the uh, cache so I need to redo this um, maybe I'll show you here this effect of all the um, camera shake is from this okay so that's how I got it all right frequency and amplitude camera lens blur if I press U U okay just U um, I animated the blur radius uh, using camera lens blur okay and uh, I set it up in such a way that every 10 frames or so I think yeah every 10 frames uh, so not not every 10 frames it is not blurred at all until 40 and then at 50 it's blurred to 30 and then at 60 it's back to zero okay um, and I also use the scale um, scaled the entire footage with respect to the blur so that when it zooms in it gets blurred and then um, I refocus this okay sort of something like that all right that's what that is and then I have this Vashimorphic 40 which is for free 
Um, I think if you search for Vashi Marfic, you can on in, in Google, you'll you'll find links to that. Basically, this is to emulate anamorphic look of um, any non-anamorphic footage. Okay, so that's what I use. This it's pretty self-explanatory. If you if you get it, uh, you just replace this layer with your layer, and that's exactly what I did. Um, in, inside of main, you also notice. Oops, you also notice that I did a little bit of color correction using Lumetri Color, which is um, out of the box with After Effects, and then I used Film Convert. Film Convert is one of my favorite software. I use this all the time, um, but it is um, at a cost. Okay, uh, you don't need to do this, but <clears throat> if I don't use it. That's how it looks like with it. That's how it looks like. And without color correction, with color correction. Okay. So that's the end of this big, long tutorial series. I hope you like it. If you liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and do not forget to click on the bell icon for notifications because I will be doing more tutorials like this. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day.